Hey peeps, it's Jess Yellow Geek, and today we're gonna cover my favorite coffee shops. Okay, some of you, um, at least one person, hi Anna, are going to know that this is kind of odd. The reason being, I can't drink coffee at all. In fact, in most cases, I can't even stand the smell of coffee. There are actually a few coffee shops in Seattle I can't walk in the front door because the smell of coffee is so strong that I just can't be in that space at all. And yet, here I am with a coffee video. I'm making this video because the number one question I get asked every time I meet someone who knows what I'm up to is, where do you find coffee in this town? And while I don't personally drink coffee, over the years I've curated a list of places that one, I can go to, and two, most of my friends who I've taken there have said the coffee is pretty good. So this is not necessarily your top five list, it's my taking my friends who like coffee to hang out with me list. So let's do this. These are not in order of preference. These are gonna be in the order I could walk them in. So don't worry about the actual number one. I use these all the time for different things and different reasons. Let's get started. Number one, Elm Coffee Roasters. This little joint in Pioneer Square, it's over by Manu's Tacos and Impact Hub and a lot of cute stuff. And of course, Intrigue, which I really need to do more coverage on. I love them. They are great for being a chill spot to go and have both tea and they've also got really good pastries. They're carrying Mighty O and London Plain. So you can kind of just hit up three places in one effectively. It's pretty cool. I will say recently the mugs have gotten huge and I'm not sure what's going on there. I'll have to ask about that next time I'm in because previously I've gotten these really tiny cute beakers and I've been in love with them. So maybe just their current clientele likes big mugs. For me, they're a little big, but that's what spoons are for. Darn. They do have a really nice selection of a lot of the milder teas, so I do often go there for white teas and kind of a calming spot to be in in Pioneer Square. Because of its location, you will see a lot of startup meetups and client stuff going on, but you can also sit outside and just chill. It's also across the street from a really cool sort of hidden park for the U.S. Postal Service that has both a lot of flies, strangely, and this gorgeous waterfall. So if you can breathe the odd fly thing, I don't know what's quite going on there, for about two seconds, the waterfalls are gorgeous and it's worth checking out and you can get your tea or coffee. It's great. Number two, more coffee. More is in Belltown and the reason I like recommending this place is really the waffles. No, really. The waffles. Waffles are gonna be kind of a repeating trend in this because I just like waffles, so you're gonna roll with it just like I am. What more is known for is their latte art, and it's quite cute. For me, they don't have very many drinks that are available that I can drink, and they tend to be on the sweet side for my preferences, but it's still really cool to see someone get like a jigglypuff in latte art. It is really cool. And their waffles are pretty solid. They're about six to nine bucks a pop, pretty fast service, and decent amount of waffle. It's nice. They're not the thickest or densest waffles. They're a little crisp, a little soft. It's good times. So yeah, waffles and coffee. Number three, this is actually two restaurants, but I'm including them together because they are literally across the street from each other. And honestly, I sometimes sent people to both because they're right there. So we're talking about Anchorhead and Mr. West. These are completely different places with very different stuff going on. I'm gonna put a link probably in the corner for my opinion on Mr. West's Waffle Bar, but they also do have coffee and some really good drinks and their own variation on an Arnold Palmer. And then Anchorhead is cold brew, but they also have a really good selection of iced teas. Like I got some really good stuff while I was there and they are known for the quaffle, which I've covered on Instagram. It's a croissant with cinnamon sugar that has been waffled and it's really fun to eat. It's very crispy and kind of looks like wood crane. It's just really neat. I wish it came with cream cheese frosting, but that's, you know, personal preference. I like taking like 
chill things to Anchorhead because it's calm, it's got good vibes kind of place. Like, you bring your hipster friend kind of there. Mr. West, I feel like it's where you'd want to bring your agent in the 1950s. It's very 50s, 60s, pseudo mod vibe. I know it's a real term for it, I'm not gonna get it right. But it's just, there's different vibes and do different things, but they're right there, so you can bounce between the two. It's pretty fun. And then number four is again a duo. I, I like finding places with multiple options for people. We're gonna go with Stumptown and Cafe Press. Now, in this case, these guys are in Cap Hill. There are plenty of other coffee shops nearby. I choose these guys because Cafe Press has one of my favorite hot chocolates in town, their chocolate show, which I was not getting today, it's nearly 90 degrees outside, and I wanted to not feel like death. But it is a really good drink, it's just like drinking warmed pudding. Suffice it to say, these are both awesome places to go to for different things. Stumptown is roasting in their basement. I think you can take tours and they do tastings. And they have Fuji Bakery if you need baked goods. And then Cafe Press next door. I usually go to for a baguette and chocolat chaud or some yogurt. The yogurt's really good. So it really again depends on what you're looking for because Cafe Press is more of a chilling kind of place. Like I'm usually there a lot longer than I am for Stumptown. Stumptown has smaller seating and very tiny tables. So I just end up usually at Cafe Press. But that doesn't mean Stumptown is bad, and likely the coffee geeks are going to end up at Stumptown and I'll pick up something at press. We'll call it good. And I'd like to put in an honorable mention here, also for Cap Hill, more waffles! I am just really happy with waffles today. So Sweet Iron Waffles, their Capitol Hill location, is much larger and has shorter lines. Which, if you've been to Sweet Iron Waffles downtown recently, if it's a nice day out, they have a line out the door, so it's nice to have an option where you can actually sit and eat in a reasonable amount of time without a giant line. It's great. So yeah, now I'd love to hear from you. Where do you go send people for coffee? Where do you send people for waffles, since apparently that's my duo of the day? If you'd love to hear more about coffee and or waffles, please hit that like or subscribe button or leave me a comment below with your opinions on everything waffle or coffee. As so always, I'm Jess Salazar Geek, hoping that you get to go out and eat all the things, especially waffles. Hey <laughs> guys!